to Engineer Your Space. Today I'm going to tackle a problem that I know a lot of women had, including myself, and that's how to store your jewelry so it doesn't end up one big tangled mess like this in some random boxes or drawers that you have lying around the house. It's really hard to find what you're looking for when it's a mess like that. I looked everywhere for a jewelry box that I liked and I couldn't find any, so I decided to design and build my own. And I came up with this idea of making a hanging jewelry box out of your average picture frame. When it's closed, it's just a regular picture frame. But when you open it, you have jewelry storage for all your rings, necklaces, and earrings, and they're all nicely organized and displayed. And when you close it, it's out of sight with no clutter. I'm going to show you how easy it is to build this jewelry box for yourself, which is simple materials like wood and cork, foam board, and really basic tools. You'll see, anyone can do this. So let's get started. We're gonna start by taking a look at our picture frame. Because it determines everything else about our project, it's really important to choose the right one. There's three things that you need to consider when you're picking your frame. First, it should be medium sized like the one I'm using, which is 14 inches by 12 inches. Second, the border width should be two inches or wider. And third, the back should be as plain as possible. You really don't want the back to have any velvet or any type of covering at all. You want it to be as plain as possible. And because we're going to be using this as our lid for our jewelry box, we're going to be opening and closing um, this and we're going to be seeing um, the back a lot. So we need to address that. The first thing that we're going to do for that is take out these pins here um, that are holding back the cardboard. We don't really need them. Um, and it's really easy to take them out with some pliers. You just um, take the tab like this, you wiggle a bit and it comes out really easily. Now we can take care of this cardboard and I'm actually going to swap it out for cork and that's really the first step in making this uh, function as jewelry storage. I'm using 12 inch by 12 inch cork tiles that I got at Staples. I think you can get four of them for about ten dollars and what's great is that they're exact they're the exact same thickness as the cardboard so um, it's an easy swap to make and they're really easy to cut using an exacto knife and the cardboard as a template. Now you could leave it like this and put it back into the frame, uh, but I'm going to put some fabric on it just to make it look prettier. You can use any color, any type really. Um, just one thing to consider is the weave. You want it to have a very loose weave and that's because you're going to be putting earrings through back in and out like this and it's going to make holes. And if your fabric has a um, loose weave then it's just going to take back its shape, which is what you want. Um, and also it's probably it's a good idea to have a thicker fabric just so that it can take the wear and tear. Now you're not going to need a lot of fabric for this, maybe half a yard at the most. You need to cut two pieces of fabric. The first piece is going to be exactly the same size as your cork. And this is going to serve as buffer between the cork and the outer um, layer of fabric that we're going to cut later. To secure this uh, fabric to the cork, I'm just using some all-purpose craft glue that works with fabric as well as paper. It works really well for this. And when it's nice and glued on like this, you have to cut another piece of fabric, which I've already cut. Um, and it should be about an inch all the way around, larger than your cork pad. And for this one, we're going to secure it to the cork with a staple gun. Now you just start from the middle of each side, like this, pulling the fabric tightly. Because the cork is pretty thin, you want to use a quarter inch long staple so they won't pierce the cork on the other side. And here you have it, the cork pad is all nice and covered with the fabric. It's going to look a lot nicer than the cardboard that was there before. Now before we put the cork pad into our frame, it's a good time to put our picture in. Um, we just don't want to be dealing with that later. And the last thing that we need to do to this um, is put some stick-on Velcro on the cork and on the mat here. This is just to prevent the cork pad from wanting to come out easily. You can also add tacks at the corners and that will make it even more secure. It's time to turn our attention to building the box. And we're going to build the box using an inch and a half wide by half inch thick poplar or pine wood. A tip when you're selecting your piece of wood at the store, uh, make sure that it's straight. Because these pieces are so thin, they have a tendency to want to warp. So you just want to make sure that the piece you're getting is straight. Of course, we're going to need four pieces um, to build our box. 
And to figure out their lengths, you take your frame and place the hinges on one side like this, flush with the edge. Mine take up half an inch of my two inch wide frame. On the other side, you place the magnetic latch plate flush with the inner border. It takes up about one inch. Your vertical pieces will go here and their horizontal ones here, each taking up half an inch of frame width. My frame measures 14 inches by 12 inches, so I'm going to need two horizontal pieces that are 11 inches long and two vertical pieces that are 12 inches long. Now we have our dimensions and I've already of course pre-cut my uh, pieces. And while you're at the store, I really recommend getting a corner clamp like this one if you don't already have one. It's like having an extra pair of hands and you really need something like this to build the box properly. So let me show you how to use the corner clamp. You take one um, top piece and one side piece and you put them into the slots and with the little handles here you just twist like that making sure that the pieces are flush and then you tighten the other one and it really just gives you um, a nice secure hold so that while you're drilling everything stays in place. So we need to drill two holes and you just want to make sure that you're drilling so that um, your screw goes in right in the middle of the half inch piece because um, we're not dealing with a very thick um, area here and if you go too much to one side or the other it could split the wood. Now to drill the holes I'm going to use a countersink drill bit and it's just going to allow um, the screw to finish flush uh, with the edge of the wood. We can just put a little bit of wood filler on top of it and the screws are going to disappear. So now that the second hole is done, you take the pieces of wood apart by loosening the clamp and it's time to put some wood glue. And that's just going to make our joints extra strong. Just slather it on. You put the pieces back together and I recommend using a thin screw to prevent splitting. So here's one corner done. You just have to repeat the exact same thing with the other three corners. And you're going to end up with a nice box like this with perfect 90 degree corners. Now the only thing that I have left to do is put some wood filler here on the screws. And then I, I need to sand the whole thing down because I want to paint uh, my box black. So once I'm done with that, I'm going to come back and show you how we're going to finish the back and how we're going to put the whole thing together. So I finished painting my box and now it's time to make the back. And to do that, I'm going to use foam board. And the main reason I'm using foam board instead of say wood or MDF is because foam board is really light so it's not going to add any weight to our jewelry box. Yet it's really strong so it's really going to be perfect to hold our jewelry. Plus the other bonus with using foam board is you can just cut it using an exacto knife. So if you notice that you have some um, jagged edges along here, like I do, you can use sandpaper to sand it down. And I like to use these sponges because they have nice straight edges that allow you to sand everything down really easily. So now that we have our back done, it's time to think about how we're gonna hang our jewelry. And for necklaces, rings, and hoop earrings, I'm gonna use these wooden pegs. I made them with quarter inch diameter wood dowels that I cut into an inch and a quarter long pieces. To prevent the jewelry from sliding off, I added a button at the end of the peg with liquid nails glue. The key here is to use a button that's just a little bit wider than the diameter of the dowel. Now if you don't have um, wooden dowels like this, you can use chopsticks or even um, golf tees would work. Now to put the peg onto the back, make an X with an X-Acto knife and make a hole just slightly smaller than the peg. Then use your peg to preform a hole to make it nice and snug. Then you add glue, again liquid nails, and place the peg making sure it's straight. So that takes care of how we're going to hang necklaces, rings, and hoop earrings. But for other type of earrings, like ear wire earrings, I'm going to use this uh, fabric pad. And I make this pad very much the same way as I made the cork pad, 
uh, with the difference being that I used batting as the cushion and foam board as the base. I stapled the fabric on much like I did with the cork pad. So here's the finished bag with all my pegs installed about an inch and a quarter apart um, to leave room for larger hoops and rings. And I used double sided tape to secure the pad. Um, you could also use Velcro if you want, that just allows you to exchange the pad out later on if you want to do that. Now we're almost ready to put the whole thing together, but before we do that, um, there's a couple of things we still need to do to the box. And that's put the hinges on and the magnetic latch. It's just much easier to do that before we have um, the back on. So the hinges, um, I put about two inches from the top and two inches from the bottom. Now for the magnetic latch, you want it to be in the middle of the other side with the magnet facing down, away from you. So now we can put our back on. But before you nail it on, um, think about where you're going to hang your jewelry box and how it needs to open for it to be convenient to get to your jewelry. Much like you want your fridge to open the right way in the kitchen. This is the same idea. Now I'm just going to use uh, normal finishing nails uh, to secure it on. So the last thing to put on the box is our hanging hardware. You need to have two of them to, for it to be really stable. And I like to put uh, them exactly two inches from the side to the center of the hardware. So that makes them exactly seven inches apart, center to center. So it makes it a lot easier to figure out where to put your holes on the wall. And now it's time to finally attach the box to the picture frame. Now there's one last thing that we need to do for this to be functional, and that's to add the metal plate that goes with the magnetic latch to make this thing close when it's on the wall. So here's the finished product. Now I'm ready to hang it on the wall and show you how it works. So here I'm in my bedroom where I've hung up my jewelry box. And I use really strong anchors to do that so that it can withstand the wear and tear of opening and closing. Now when you're just looking at this, it looks like a picture frame. Nobody could tell that inside, there's all this jewelry just wonderfully displayed. There's a place for hoop earrings, rings, necklaces, and every type of earrings. Everything is well organized, making it super easy to pick out what you want to wear in the morning. Just take a chain, take some earrings, and then you close up, and it's out of sight. No clutter. I really love that about this project. Double duty picture frame and jewelry box. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this project as much as I have and that it's going to inspire you to build your very own jewelry box. See you next time.